So thank you, Nicola, for the recording. So we are here in uh, Telleres, it's a neighborhood in uh, Lisbon. Uh, we are celebrating today the sixth webinar of our hot topic discussion series of the MIT Community of Practice. And this webinar is, is, is kind of special. We had our, for, well, there are two reasons mainly. First, that we're streaming from one of the pilot projects of the, of the municipality transition. And uh, the other reason is that today is, uh, is a good moment for kind of joining what is the pilots and the wider community of practice. And so we are joining today for, we are closing, we're we are close to the end of the first, this first, uh, first phase, phase of the uh, pilots of the municipality, you know, municipalities in transition. And so we are kind of here to evaluate how it went and we can, you know, get feedback and, and co-design and uh, this is an opportunity to show uh, to the world the project that we are doing and uh, for that reason we have here representative from two pilots we have uh, Julia from Santorso and then we have Tracy and Ishvan from Kishpurst I will give uh, a brief introduction about the Municipalities in Transition project. I have a, just a couple of slides. And then they can, they can give you some insights about their, their project. We already had two uh, pilot projects in uh, one of our previous webinars about strategies to bring community and municipalities together. And today we have the opportunity to show other uh, two uh, pilot projects. So, uh, some quick technical details. After the webinar, we will publish in our Municipalities of Transition blog uh, the recorded video of the webinar with uh, possible resources, useful links, and anything that can come out today from both participants and presenters. Um, and uh, to be able to, to basically uh, publish the recording, we need uh, the, the participant uh, uh, answer to so give give their um, acceptance to to publish the video so in this case is Gary and whoever will come after him uh, so and uh, we may uh, we appreciate also to know a little bit about you so uh, Nicola will show you on the chat some uh, questions if you could answer in the chat although um, I'd say that may, maybe Gary can present himself directly a bit since he's the only one so if you want to do a, a quick check-in gary for so uh, i think you're you're muted uh. yes so i'm gary alexander old friend of transition i was on the transition board of trustees for four years but now it's several several years ago so I've, always, I've continued to think Transition is a wonderful organization. Um, as I said before we started, I think that the idea of transition groups working with their local communities, with their local authorities, is a really exciting development. I'm really interested to hear that, and I'm really excited about the idea that these separate projects are, find, are, are working together. That's always what I've, I was trying, always trying to do when I was on the board, get, get the different transition groups to work together in effective ways. I do agree for the recording. Yes. Thank you very much, Gary. Great introduction, really, really perfect. Um, so I'd say I'll, I'll give a quick uh, introduction to the Municipalities in Transition project. And um, for that, I'll, I'll share my screen. Um, Right, so <clears throat> Municipalities in Transition basically was born, uh, I'd say about two years ago, um, out of a co-design process between Transition Network and uh, Transition Network Hubs in the world. And the idea was to 
uh, bring together somehow the civil society and municipalities to reach what is uh, the systemic change toward sustainability. Okay? So the main, I'd say the main uh, principle that uh, I've always embedded in the, into the, the um, methodology that, that, that we, re we, we realize are the principles that are on the basis of transition methods are head, heart, and hands. So probably most of you would know, but just to summarize it, the head, you have to act on the basis of data, of the best information available. Heart, you have to work with compassion, value, pain, pain, emotional, paying attention to emotional, psychological, relational, social aspect. And hands, you, you have to know how to turn this into reality, basically, to apply it in real life. And uh, so within this project, we, we basically uh, developed this methodology, which have been changed the name somehow because the system and the framework somehow is always kind of uh, the same thing. And this is what we provided to each pilot, a methodology, a system or framework, call it as you want, based on certain principles. So the governance, uh, on how to work together and make this, the decision making, uh, we provided them a grid. We, we cannot eat, enter too much into the detail of many things, so just uh, take it as a kind of a brief explanation. It's, it's, it's a way to uh, quickly understand the community in a way that help to, to use systemic thinking. Okay, and this is the grid, the, the basis of, of, the, of the methodology. Then we are developing a database, which is a sort of toolbox to use uh, when working together between municipalities and, and uh, civil society. Uh, we are developing and working uh, in a, a community of practice, which is a community, a worldwide community. And for example, this series of webinar is done within uh, the idea of creating a, a worldwide community of practice to share learning, to share experiences and failures as well, which are uh, as important as successes. And then uh, the tutor, which is the person that guides uh, the pilots through the whole process of uh, systemic uh, change and through the sustainability. Uh, and so what can you do with this kind of methodology? The idea is to use the methodology for diagnosis and evaluation of the actual situation in the pilots. And with the methodologies, you have the function to design, co-design, co-implement, and as well as the toolbox I was discussing before with the database to obtain what it is that we want, which is a cultural change, a deep, profound culture, cultural change. So this is a very rough uh, timeline of the project. Uh, the project started with the first survey of cases worldwide, and uh, we collected about 70, 71 cases around the world. Um, and uh, this happened in January 2017. After that, we did uh, an in-depth study of the selected cases and the framework, framework or system was kind of developed uh, throughout this, uh, like the, the following months. And after that, the, we decided to select six pilot, pilot cases where to test this uh, methodology that uh, we developed. So after the first training in March 2018, we basically started the, the testing of the framework and the creation of this uh, community, uh, international community of practice. And uh, we're approaching the end of the, of the project. So we are in the, in the moment of kind of evaluation, feedback and, and so on. Uh, so these are the six pilots. I have here like uh, six uh, images. Uh, we are in this moment in uh, Tegueiras, uh, which is a, a, a neighborhood in, in Lisboa, Portugal. Um, and then we, are, we have here uh, Julio from uh, Santorso and uh, uh, Tracy and Ishban from uh, Kispers. So I would actually give space to, to Julio so he can uh, talk a little bit about the project in Santorso. Um, Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> okay, I hope you can hear me. I've been a little bit uh, 
infectious in, in, in the last days, so you are safe. You, you won't you won't take any of the viruses I have in, in my body right now. So um, uh, this is San Torso. This is a little town of six thousand inhabitants in the north east of Italy. It's near near Venice. You can see in the map. And uh, so this is one of the of the pilot and. Um, Taking consideration that Santoso is a res residential town, we have no industries. We are we have many industries in the in the area, but Santoso is just residential, so it's very quiet. It's a very quiet place where people sleep, more or less. And um, so, um, I, I tell you this because I don't know if you live in a in this kind of uh, town. I, I guess there are many small towns in the world, so. Maybe um, I will tell how we can how, how you can bring MIT in this in this situation because probably if you live in a small town you you know personally people live in the municipality maybe the technicians are, are your friends or maybe the the mayor is your friend so it's easier to to have a direct contact with them and, and talk about these ideas and projects that you have in mind <clears throat> so. Uh, uh, convincing them about MIT was really easy. Uh, the, the key for us was trust. We, we started the transition initiative in 2011, and since and since then, we've been always uh, constantly uh, trying to 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 build connections, trust between all the actors in in, in the area. So, especially with, 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 the, lo with the local government. So, uh, last year I went to the mayor, we, we met for a coffee and I said, uh, we know you are very busy, we know that you are already uh, in, in near the, the burnout, okay? So, we don't, want you, we, we don't want to add more efforts from your part, but we, but we want you to know about this project, the municipalities in transition, we think it, it can help our municipality and our civil society to work better together and to uh, um, to speed up our way through to, to, to sustainability and resilience. So uh, we have this project. Uh, our proposal is that we, th we, we are in charge of this. We don't, people from the municipality can participate, can learn, can be involved, but only if you want and only if, if, if you feel it, you know? So would you like us to, to try to do this? So it was very easy for, for, for him to say, yeah, please, finally someone who wants to help us instead of fighting us, you know? <laughs> so it was a really natural and, and, um, and, and, and happy thing. So, so we started. <clears throat> and the first part of MIT is to uh, like collect a group of people who are part of different networks in the territory and try to try to map all the existing actions or actors that are already working in the area and are building a kind of sustainable future and we, we, we look for action we, we looked for actions that was building sustainable um, social uh, economical and environmental sustainability so these ones are more or less the businesses and the, and the cooperatives that are already working in, in the territory in San Torso. But we have many more associations and informal groups that are working. More or less, we, we met 40, 50 uh, existing actions. So, so this is um, our baseline, okay, fundamentally. So looking at what was happening, we said, okay, what is the most easy thing that we can do? What is the, the natural thing that we can do? And we, 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 came, up, we came up with three ideas, three actions. Uh, two is, is the RECOM project and the Life Beware project that are projects already carried on by the municipality that we felt that they needed support. And the municipality said that they need the support. And on the other side, we, we wanted to do something more. 
and we we noticed how in our municipal in, in our in, in Santorso there are many citizens, many groups, and many enterprises that, that are already very uh, careful about uh, the, the energy transition and the, and the environmental transition. So we wondered how, how can we offer something new to them? Because uh, they were a bit too weak on, on their job, on, on, their, on their work. You know? So they were repeating the same stuff and the same project uh, every year the same project but they needed something something new so for example this is Salta la Corrente and Salta la Corrente is a project which aim is to involve the community families and groups to change their electricity the energy uh, furniture or provider or supplier and move to a company that sells only renewable energy like 100% of the electricity that you will buy, it, it is made 100% from renewable sources. <clears throat> this is a very simple action, but we started to, to map uh, the, the potential of, the, of this simple action. And we discovered, for example, that if all the families of Santoso shifted to a renew renewable energy provider, we could save almost a thousand tons of CO2 per year. And that number means like a 40% less, I mean, we could save every year 40% uh, uh, CO2 emissions. This is, this, is, this is the emissions of the residential sector, only the residential sector. But it, we start to spread the idea that we as, 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 as citizens can have a huge impact if, if we do something little, but, but, but together. No? That is the transition idea that we can, we can do incredible things together. So, and, and then also the, the, the power of Santa La Corrente is that once you can, you can use data and indicators, you, people can have a, um, an idea of how huge is the problem. So for example, it's true that we can lower the 14% the of residential sector emissions. But if we look at the total emissions make it, made in Santos every year, even if we reach this incredible uh, mission of having all the families join the project, it would only be a 3% less of CO2 emissions. So even if we, if we beat that, it will be very hard and maybe in, 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 maybe in many years. And still, we are lowering about three percent. So people started to give it to, have, to, to to think, you know, oh, that's it, it's a really huge uh, challenge, and this is only one one little part. But at the same time, we started to think also about um, uh, the destination of the money we spend uh, on the electricity bill, because. We, we estimated that in Santorso, every year, we spend more or less um, 600,000 euros in electricity. And we made other calculations, but in the end, every year will be like this number, uh, 132,000 euros per year, that we could move from fossil fuel-based sources of electricity to a renewable one, only in Santorso. And we start wondering if all towns, all the families all over the world started to do this, how incredible impact we could have. And some, someone asked to us, well, probably it would be more expensive, so people won't do this because we want to save money. The truth is that sometimes, uh, most of the time, this, this ship is, you, you don't have to spend more, it's the same cost. And sometimes it's also cheaper. So, so it, it was really hard for people not to say, well, there, there, there are no reasons to not do this. No, it's, it, it's easy and it's effective. And um, so, so, another thing, two weeks ago, also the municipality joined the, the, the project. So now all the municipal public buildings, you know, uh, 
libraries, schools, the hospital, and the street lights goes by re renewable energy. So, and it's like 160,000 euros per year that equals to the, the, the energy uh, spending of, of 300 families more or less. So, so this is happening, it's, it, it's very easy. Uh, we made it the material, so if you, if you go, for example, on Facebook, you can find the different uh, energy companies in Italy that, that can provide you this, this energy. And we wonder what in your, in your nation, how many companies you, you have. Maybe you have none, maybe you have many. Uh, so the idea is that we can start spreading this work. Okay? Now, if you have more questions, we can try to answer. So, so another, um, another important action we, we take, took is um, the RICO project. And the RICO project was uh, something that the, the municipality was already in uh, with other partners, with other European partners. And the aim was to uh, uh, try to, uh, to, to, to make awareness about the, important, the importance of local democracy. And so they had to uh, offer to the community a workshop on local democracy, but they didn't know really what to do with this. No? So they asked us if, 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 if we could help, and we probably say, yes, sure. So we organized this two-day workshop uh, called Exploring the Future of Democracy. So it was a very hard title. We thought that nobody would ever come, you know. But instead, there were, there were, like, there were like 40 people and coming from all over, you know, it was like from, from the municipality, technicians from the municipality, people from European associations, from um, controlled entities by the municipality. So people that, uh, it was the first time that we have this kind of people in our meetings. And, and it was the first time that we started to work with, the, with, with a, a transition model with these people and they love this. So what did we do? Well, the first day, we offered uh, a simulation. Maybe you know that it's called the fish tank simulation, and it's a game that was invented in, in, in the MIT of Boston, <clears throat> and it was meant to understand how the sustainable resource management can, can, can be, um, and also it is offered to leader to leaders all over the world and universities. So we, we try to do this game, and the idea of the game is that. If there's the big sea with a lot of fish, and we have to go fishing. And the, at the end of the game, the one with, the, with, with, with more money is, is going to win the game, right? So what happened that uh, at the beginning, everything was okay. There was a lot of fish. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm spoiling the, 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 the simulation. So if, if you don't know it, you can just <laughs> Close your ears for a second. Uh, but the little spoiler is that at the beginning it was everything is okay, people are happy, a lot of money. But at some point things start to go bad. Very little fish in the ocean, and they risk to go bankrupt. You know? So, at the uh, in the in, in in the game they need people need the different companies, fishing companies need to meet and agree in in a they have to make an agreement about how to save themselves, the ocean, the fish, and everything. And everything. So, um, how did it go? Well, this is this, this is not a, an actual picture of, of, of the of, of the workshop, but more or less they, they ended up, they ended up fighting each other, and uh, the, the simulation finished finished very badly. You know, everyone went bankrupt, and it was over. And the funny thing is that uh, every time you offer the simulation, every time it goes like this. It doesn't matter how smart are the people involved, uh, how they are part of sustainability movement or organization. They all end up, they all, all end up in this way. And for me, it's, it's the, the core 
principle and thing about the MIT, about municipality transition, that uh, in a, in a as a global perspective, we have a lot of problems. We are risking to go to everybody to go bankrupt. But when we meet to find a solution, we end up fighting each other. So there's something not about the people, but about the culture that we have, about how we relate to each other. And the fact that we are, nobody taught us, at least in Italy, to cooperate, but they are, we are taught to, 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 to compete with each other. You know? it's, sometimes it's good, but in this case, it's not. So, uh, so for them, for us, for everybody, it was a real like aha moment to say, okay, there, there, there's not bad people because and we are, it's, it's like some, it, it, it's part of us. And so we need to, 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 to behave differently. And so in the workshop, for example, the day after we, we tried some tools about sociocracy, for example, but the all MIT process for me is to help municipalities and governments and people and enterprise, everybody, not to end up like this, but to end up in a much more uh, sustainable and happy future <laughs> and, and reality. So that's it for me. Um, I pass the word to you. Mm -hmm. Julio, thank you very much. It was really inspiring, the, the project you showed actually. So possibly somebody can repeat you know, the, the examples you gave. Um, I pass the word to, to the pilot from Hungary, Tracy and Ishban. Hello, hello, uh, hello to everybody. Um, especially to you, Gary, has been our one real live listener. Nice to see you again. Hello, everybody. So and, and no Amy. Hmm? Who? No Amy has joined us. We have another person as well. Ah, hello, hello no Amy. Hi, hello. <laughs> um, so I'm Tracy. I'm from the Transition Vekerle, um pilot. Um, I'll let Ishkan introduce himself. Uh, I'm also um, a member or an activist of uh, Transition Vekerle, uh, but for four years I have also been an elected member of the Kispest Council. Kispest is a district of which Vekerle is a neighborhood. So I have one foot in the activist uh, civic. Uh, seen and one foot in the in the local uh, government um, as a green mp shall we share the screen yeah can we show you some pictures just to give you you know some idea of where we are so uh hold on sorry share. Show screen. Share screen. yes i hope so So yeah, like let me let me welcome you to a place called Koshkaroy Square. This is the center of Vekerle in a very very cold winter's day. Um, you can see this is somewhere which is surrounded by radial roads. And the question is, are these roads leading somewhere? Or are they all leading somewhere out? Or are they all leading us all in? This space, Vekerle, is very very special because it was part of a utopian experiment 120 years ago, Garden City movement. It's the biggest European example of a planned garden city. So basically, this is where, you know, so many things start from Vekerlek. has been some really, really smart people 120 years ago designed this as a prospective playground for transition. Um, and yeah, Vekerlek is part of Kishpest, as Istvan said. Kishpest is a district in the south of Budapest. Here you go. This is a whole of Kishpest. It's, a, it's not a wealthy district, it's a rather poor district, has a tradition of having a socialist um, council and we also at the moment we have a socialist council. Vekerle is a little square here where Ishtar is. Um, yep, and that, this is 11,000 people. The whole of the district is 60,000 people. Um, so our story kind of starts, you know, as Transition Vekerle. We're the first um, and only official transition initiative in Hungary. We started our work 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And so last year when we started the um, as Kishpest in transition, as you know, as a Kishpest project, 
when we started this, that was our 10 year old birthday. So this was a really, really nice way to celebrate our birthday by kind of, you know, trying to take our story a bit further. People you can see in this picture, these are some of the local folk who we all work with. Um, this is us. I mean, we're, we're local people, you know, like you could say there's me in the background. Next to me, there's Yuli. She's a gardener. There's Krista. She's a translator. Aggie, she's a person who does other local energy stuff. Shamu, Shamu's been here on the Municipalities and Transition Project as well. He's an urban planner. And Bensa, Bensa was the person who, from the Hungarian hubs, he took responsibility for this project. Um, in the background, other folk who really, we work together, we've been working together, most of us, for at least, at least the last six or seven years. And it's an amazingly creative and fruitful cooperation. Uh, and so where does the council come into this story? We, we work together with the council for years on a very ad hoc basis. So, you know, some of the things we do, we share that we, we're the experts on the local compost program. So we've been, we've got a compost program. We've got 800 families composting locally, which is great. That's a project which has been around for six years. We've had cooperation on insulation programs, you know, social insulation to help mostly uh, poorer families to be able to reduce the drafts in their house and also, in, you know, increase their, you know, increase their comfort level while reducing their energy use. So we've had, you know, a lot of ad hoc type of participation in council stuff. But what made this different? What made this, you know, the Municipalities and Transition Project different? I think, to be honest, at the very beginning, it was the framing. So this was the first time where we could go to the mayor and say, Dear Mr. Mayor, oh, somehow they're getting upside down picture here. Um, we could go to the mayor. Yes, here on the left hand side, we have the mayor. This is Peter Goida. He's been, he's been our mayor for years and years and years in more than one cycle. Um, we could be quite honest and say, you know, we have a kind of an ambivalent relationship. We're sometimes difficult for him and we're sometimes something which brings him a lot of pleasure, we could say. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to be able to go to him and say, dear Mr. Mayor, we have been chosen out of about 70 different applicants to be a pilot project um, to explore the idea of what happens if municipalities and the local communities can work together. And we would really love you to sign up officially with this paper, you know, and commit yourself to this. And not just commit yourself to this, but commit people from your staff to this. So let's do this, but let's take it seriously. And not just sign the paper, but, you know, we're actually going to bring some money into this through the project. So this was a really, really nice way to approach them. Not to be turning up and telling them that you needed something done or that you were doing something wrong but rather to give them an invitation to take part in a project which, really, civil society, because of the funders, would be funding. So this was a really different place to start from. And he was good. You know, he committed a really high-level member of his staff, actually his right hand, his cabinet director, to be the point of contact for this project, which is great. And he brought in another guy who's Peter. He's been active in this uh, since the beginning. And he's been a really good guy to work with. I really feel he's starting to, you know, he, he quite appreciates, I think, the insights that he's getting through this project. There's a lot of cultural uh, shifting going on there. Um, you could go on. Would you want to? Yeah, 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 you want, want to move on the pictures? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, a little bit more about maybe the background. What I said there was about the, the, the commitment from the mayor uh, here in this picture beside the mayor, you've got someone else from the council that we regularly work with. This is a deputy mayor. You know, we, I think what we know about transition is we do stuff differently. You know, we like to talk differently. We've got a bit of a different culture. We put a lot of value onto understanding each other. And over the last year, we've, we've had a lot of interactions with the deputy mayor. This has been kind of informal. This is... This is Judy that we're showing you here, smiling, looking at this nice cup. Uh, he really appreciates the, the type of cultural work that we do. It's been really interesting to see that when we bring him into kind of like offbeat debates and things where there's a lot of sort of facilitated interactions, he gets really inspired by this. And he actually, like in one day, he said to us, like, 
you know, that thing you said on that meeting, that was really good. And actually, I'm going to try that as well. The next time I bring everybody together together for the local quiche pest business dinner, I'm going to get them to do kind of spectrum lines with their hands. So it was really nice to see that, you know, even people in these kinds of positions, if they're kind of involved in stuff on the basis of, you know, appreciating their good intent, they can they can start to experiment, they feel comfortable. So yeah, this is the kind of both this is kind of a bottom line thing, isn't it? It's like, you know, how do we work together? And so what I've said so far is that, you know, culturally we've used this space to kind of feel more comfortable with the council, with these kind of key players in the council. But obviously the reason we're doing it is because we want to have more, you know, we want practical outcomes as well. We don't just want to feel good together. Practical outcomes, you can see in these two guys' hands, something really special. This is a cup. This cup, as you can see, it has Atalokolo Vekerle written on it. Atalokolo Vekerle in Hungarian is transition Vekerle. And this is our local cup. We've got a, a small size and a big size, and we use these on our uh, community events. As a community group, with other community groups, we organize twice a year um, the local community days, which bring in about 3,000 people over two and a half days. So it's a massive flow of people and it creates, unfortunately, a massive amount of waste. We might be the local greens, but it's not always easy to get everybody on board. So we did manage to get this cup. We got this cup made about a year and a half ago, and we've been using it at local events. But what did the MIT project help us do? Basically, like to use this cup, I think everybody knows there's a lot of hygiene rules that you need to be able to uh, conform to. And, you know, we're a local community group. You get 3,000 people going through an event. You're not going to have the resources to be able to wash these things. So that means, you know, your, your ability to be able to use them effectively is really, really uh, constrained by basic local legislation. But what does the council have? The council has absolutely amazing infrastructure, doesn't it? And so one, one of the very, very first things that happened within this project, which I think it's, we find it very difficult to get people to understand why this is just so wonderful. Basically, we asked the council if they could find some way of us getting these cups washed. And they said, yeah, like, no problem. We'll open the school for two days. We'll open the school kitchens. There's the washing facilities. We'll get into dinner ladies who are quite happy to wash up. And yeah, we'll get this done. Why is that significant? You know, we're a local community group, group with a resource that can be used better, and the council has the background infrastructure to make to make this. What do you say to, to to help us to get the most out of things? You know, now we have a we don't have a cup, we have a service. We have a service which helps us to reduce waste. Hence, it helps us to reduce our energy use. It helps us to make one planet living, reducing our footprint so much more achievable. So this is great. And this is the kind of thing we want them to do. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else it is that I could go over to you, which, you know, on one hand tells you what the concrete things that we got in this project. The other hand as well sort of says, you know, the institutional changes that we're trying to achieve. I'm just wondering if Ishtar, Ishtar could move us on to the next picture. Yeah, there's a cup. This is the cup, which uh, because of this first cup, the Kishmesh also made its own cup. But that, I don't want to just get stuck at the cup issue, you know, I mean, it is, we are just talking about cups here. But then now, this means that, you know, in our district, we're 11,000 in our small part of Kishpest. Now, the wider Kishpest, 60,000 people, they've got, a, they've, got, they've got a way of reducing their own local waste. The council has events every week, really every week, and every week they produce loads of waste. But now what they've worked out is that they have these cups, this is something great. It's a promotional thing for their own district as well. It has a green message on it as well. But now they'll have, when they have an event, then they'll be using this cup and they'll be washing it in the local schools and they have a system worked out for this now. So we're really pleased about this, partly because it's, um, we had something which was good, you know, as a local civil people, which we were able to show to them. It captured their imagination. We started to understand how the systems could work with it. And now we have, basically within our district, the opportunity to reduce waste in a much, much better way. So for us, this was a really great outcome. It might sound something small, but it's a really great outcome for this project. Can we move on? 
Mm -hmm. And it, there's, for some reason, our pictures seem to want to be upside down here. This picture that each man was trying to show you here is, turn your heads upside down if you'd like to see it, because it kind of looks more or less the same way anyway. That's our local market. Uh, you know, as I said, we worked together with the council on other things as well. And one of them was finding funding to be able to renovate our local market and to turn this market into basically a community agora. This has worked. This is something we have a long-term commitment for from the council as well. The market's renovation is, well, is more or less finished and we'll be setting up a community cooperative to be able to deliver on the local food action plan which you know this cooperative will have a space here on the market it will help to revitalize the market and it will help local people to learn much much more about how they can create their own food um, how they can eat better health's an issue that's also something we want to address and how food can be culturally a sort of space of celebration as well you know people in the council didn't understand why it's so important for us to have this space you know, it's 30 square meters on a market, which is roughly 600 square meters. Um, and I think they're only really just starting to understand now, like the, these spaces for us, they're, they're kind of places of cultural catalysts. We, from this space, we're able to create so much. And this is one of the outcomes of the MIT as well. I mean, we had to have this whole process of negotiating with the council over this space. And what we found was that because of the MIT and because of the constant contacts with them, they much better started to understand what we, how we worked and also the level, level of professionalism that we could work with. That surprised them. They even said that, you know, they, they, don't, usually have, they don't usually have that kind of level of um, clarity and um, vision from anybody, let alone civil organisations. So that was a really nice thing for them to come back with. You know, they were kind of like sitting with shocked faces when we presented them with the, you know, the action plan and the local food. And, yeah, I mean, it's great to have these outcomes, really, really good. The, what I said about the market and about it being a building, it's not just a building, it's also this process, which is, you know, what the picture here is, the, um, basically is the, the baseline for the local food strategy. Um, we did a, not within the MIT project, but parallel to the MIT project, we published this, which is a kind of, um, a measure of what the council has done in the district and what the local civil um, associations have done in the district to recreate the local food base on food sovereignty or sustainability as you'd like to put it and within the MIT project what we decided was this um, implementing this working at an action plan to implement this would be the way that we would be able to take the MIT cooperation forward in another um, constant um, and predictable cooperation framework. So yeah, MIT it created a space for us. We got to do great things within it. And I think I'd give the word over to each to maybe talk a little bit more about some of the outcomes from the MIT. Okay, uh, I will mention a few other things, a few other actions and uh, little stories from this uh, pilot. Uh, I'd like to stress that I, I'd like, I, I try to uh, give these thoughts from a slightly different perspective the perspective of the of the local councillor who has one foot in so-called power although uh, locally um, the socialists uh, and the liberals have the power uh, they are um, they are they have the majority in the council and uh, the right wing and the far right and the greens myself are in opposition um, we are showing you this picture because um, public catering had been outsourced uh, to companies uh, seven years ago and they are on a 10-year contract and us local greens and the local transition people uh, had been in bitter conflict uh, with, the, with the council and the company over the quality of food and the service that they gave. And uh, it's been an ongoing issue for seven years, but this uh, the framework, the platform that was uh, provided to us uh, through the MIT um, helped to redefine this relationship and from being in conflict, uh, we went to being in 
kind of a cooperation to uh, trying to see how this situation could be solved and how we could move on either next year or, or by the time uh, the contract for the company uh, has terminated. So, um, and overall, not just in the in the case of uh, the catering, but generally, um, I personally, as a local opposition Green MP, uh, was seen as kind of a nuisance, trying bringing up issues all the time that were you know kind of uneasy for the local power, and uh, with the with the MIT process and the backing up from from local transition initiative. I have had the feeling that they now see me and also us uh, more as a possible partner and also a help. So sometimes they need uh, pressure uh, which they can exert on outside uh, players and we are trying, we are giving uh, them help in uh, putting that pressure on this company, for example. This is uh, the conference. Have you got the right picture, Esteban? Sorry? We're still looking at the market. They're still looking at the market? Oh, right. Why is that happening? Are you still looking at the market? Yep. Can you be closer? Uh -huh. pictures. Sorry, just a second. You're looking at something else now. Okay. So this was just an uh, illustration of the public catering. You told the story. So this is the city hall. This is where the councillors usually meet. Here is the mayor. And with the help of, uh, of the local transition initiative and especially the MIT process, we were able to redefine the space. On a number of occasions we had, you know, transition-like uh, brainstorming events and uh, public events and collaborating workshops here uh, which uh, in which local uh, activists, local council workers and local politicians uh, took place on, a, on, a, on an equal basis, like, you know, equals and uh, that has a really tangible cultural effect and it also reflects one of the principles, the heart principle of, of the whole story. Uh, this is just another picture of the vice mayor, the famous cop and one of the local photographers. And um, this is yet another occasion where we use the city wall to, to create a, a different feeling of the space and use it for a different kind of uh, collaboration. These, are, yeah, the video I want to go into much more detail about these pictures. Um, I think I've said everything I would have wanted to say. Tracy, anything else? Mm, no, I think so. Well, I think that kind of covered everything. I mean, it was a good opportunity, it came at a good time. And just maybe, I'm not sure if I said this at the beginning or not. The you know, we have some. We have a lot of experience working with other groups in Hungary, other transition-like groups. And one of the questions which always comes up is how do we how do we achieve more? And how do we achieve more when our council, our local council, who should be our ally, isn't on board? So, you know, the, the whole thing about the transition Vekele project is that it's people look at it as something which is helping to redefine, you know, possibilities. So we're really pleased that we're able to see an improvement in our relationship with the council through this project because it wasn't just important for us, it's important really for many, many other local groups in difficult situations who would like to see these things resolved. So if we can present them with a positive story, then they also see within that an opportunity that if it can work for us, it can maybe work for them too. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy and Ishban. Could you stop that? That's it. Okay, we have some, I'd say some, some time left for, let's say for people who would like to ask questions. Probably Gary, Noemi, Pedro, 
este ano. Please, Gary. Yes. <clears throat> In one of the earlier slides, uh, is I got the impression that one of the projects was from Emilia Romagna. Is that the Santorso? Are you from? Uh, um, it's, uh, Veneto. it's Veneto. In the north of Italy, northeast. Yeah. That's not. Because I, I would have been interested to hear about because that's it's an, it's. As I understand it, Emilia Romagna is full of cooperatives, local cooperatives working together. Mm -hmm. um, can you, do you know, can you say anything about that? Cristiano, I might want to speak about that. Yeah, may, maybe Cristiano? Cristiano, are you there? Yes, he is. Yes, Yes, of course. Yeah. Emilia Romagna is full. Yeah. Sorry. Emilia Romagna is full of cooperative, but uh, since uh, 100 years ago, so it's not new. And uh, that's one of the reasons why transition was somehow easier in Emilia Romagna because we we have quite a deep culture of uh, cooperation uh, even if um, well transition is a completely new cultural um, way of dealing with the problem so what we need in cooperation is a, a cooperative culture that makes uh, things easier and uh, what we are doing now quite often is to offer to cooperatives um, help and training to use new methodology of governance for instance because uh, the cooperative system still uses uh, the the standard methodology of decision uh, the uh, calling the um, the associated and making them vote uh, for majority, which is a way to do it, but of course it's not a, a very effective way to to get get to take good decision. So I don't know if it's this that you you want to know, but um, in in our case in Emilia Romagna, but in many other places in um, in Italy, cooperative culture is quite developed. In Veneto also, the difference is that cooperative in Emilia Romagna comes more from the left side. So they are in, into um, sort of um, ideological area, which is the, the ideological area of the left. And uh, in Veneto is more uh, coming from the Catholic and, um, side. And in Italy, we call it white cooperative and red cooperative. So we are red in Emilia Romagna and in Veneto, more often they are white. Thanks. Thank you, Cristiano, for your explanation, I think I'd say. <laughs> Maybe Giulio can add something on the cooperative situation in Veneto. Not really. Not really. No. You've said enough. So, um, is there anybody else who wants to make a question or comments or whatever? Uh, probably uh, Noe raised hands. Please go on. Hi. Thank you for the presentations. They were super interesting. And I have two questions, and one is um, regarding the political, I mean, that you're working with the municipalities. What what happens when, I don't know if you have already suffered it, but what happens when there is a change in the, in the elections and there is another party? And I mean, how do you continue with the, with the work? Do you have a plan on that or have uh, had it happened to you already? Um, and the other question is for, for Julio, uh, more practical. Like, I don't know if you have already said it, but um, how did you make the people uh, switch electricity? Because it's a personal choice, isn't it? 
maybe I got I didn't hear some part of your presentation. In that case, I'm I'm sorry, but um, I, I I didn't get that. Now, how do you make everyone switch to another company? I I'm curious. About. Thank you. Okay, so the, the first question was about what happens if uh, the political party changes, right? And, and um, yes, the, the truth is that we've been experimenting uh, the MIT framework only in the last year, so we, we didn't have any, any, any change until now. But I can tell you that uh, uh, once started, most of the time we worked with technicians, not with elected politicians. And uh, it makes me hope for the future because in, just in case in the next elections we'll go, you know, it will change something. And maybe there will be, there will be people that they really don't like our, our work. We still have a lot of, of people who can trust and, and, and with whom we can cooperate and do wonderful things together. Uh, this is a, a possibility. The other possibility is that the, the, the MIT framework uh, has been created to work with everybody, not just with people you know, of our similar ideology or, or party. So I think that the, uh, I'm really curious uh, if the next elections with something will change, I'm really curious about what, what, what will happen. Um, um, I'm not uh, hoping for it, but <laughs> I think it could be interesting for the for the process itself. So this is my my, my view on this. And about the satellite corrente, this is I think the problem uh, that uh, stopped this idea to to spread about the changing our energy furniture because it's not visible because you do by your own in your in, in your house in your room nobody sees you so so it starts to spread you know it, it, it's not like doing gardening together for example that everyone can see but what we we've done is to create some materials some informative materials and and a facebook page a facebook group where people can start saying, okay, I did it, you know, I, I changed company. So people say, oh, and they, they, they like it. And, and also in Santorso, we, we created a form, a Google form, where people, we ask people that once they, they, they sign the contract, they put their names and how kilowatt per hour they spend every year and how much, it, it's, it's anonymous, but, but just to have an idea, you know? So for example, so, so far, more or less 40 families uh, uh, changed company, and uh, but we think this is a long-term process. So in, in in the future, we will have we we already have an energy desk for the municipality that in the past years have been helping people to, for example, buy uh, efficient technologies or buy solar panels together. And from now on, the energy desk will also help people to, to, to change, uh, to change the, the, the company. And most of the time, the, ch the, the obstacles are very like, stupid things, like old people that uh, are, not used to, are not used to use the computer. They said, it's very easy for me, but I, I don't know how to use the computer. Could you help me with that? And sometimes this is the only problem, you know? So you just go to their house and, the, and, the, and you help them. So. Um, this is something strange because it has to do with the, uh, the market. So one of the risks was to, uh, as a municipality, we, because we were we were offering this this project as a municip as municipality, uh, the risk was to uh, help some companies and not others, or just you know people could say, well maybe you're paid by someone, or there are some conflict of interest, you know. Um, so we tried to be as neutral as possible. We, first, we made um, some, a list of the values we were looking in the company and some characteristics. Then we mapped these companies and we found just six 
companies in Italy. And then we show, we, we give this to people and we say, these are the companies we, we found. If you have more, please tell us that we update the list. So you can choose whatever, but we are just uh, suggesting you to do this. So that's it. I pass to Tracy. Oh, I wanted to say something. Uh, I was going to answer uh, an answer for your first question about what happens when uh, the politicians get re-elected and changed. Uh, that's actually happened for another of our pilots who isn't on this call today, uh, the Brazilian one in Sao Paulo, in a district of Sao Paulo called Via Mariana. And uh, in fact, for them, uh, it was a positive change. I mean, it could go either way, but they described to us this week how uh, they had 10 meetings with the previous mayor and he was just about kind of starting to really understand the municipalities and transition project. Now the, the mayor and all his, his kind of uh, close staff have been re-elected, new team. They went in and did one presentation to them about the municipalities and transition project and, and they said he immediately got it. He was really enthusiastic about it. They're so as a project they're feeling really heartened by that and uh, really looking forward to working with him. So it's a question that I've heard a lot, what happens when the politicians change, but it's an interesting story that it actually sometimes it can be positive. And another answer that I've often heard is you, you also have to build the relationships with, with the staff, with the technicians, the officers who perhaps will stay in, in place even if the political leadership changes. Um, but And our, our next webinar on, on the 5th of March is all about how to work with elected politicians, so I'm sure that question will come up again there in more detail, and I'll pass to Tracy. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Tracy, yeah, Tracy, you want to start? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll start. Um, so, we have been working as a transition initiative for 10 years, and Throughout those 10 years, we've had the same socialist mayor, uh, but the composition of the council has varied a little. Um, I think the local transition initiative is credible enough and strong enough so that nearly everybody wants to be on good terms with them, with us. Tracy, for example, is is, uh, has been uh, a guest, a regular guest on the local environmental committee, uh, invited by the, the chair of the committee, because one of the right-wing uh, councillors proposed that, a right-wing councillor when he was vice mayor. Um, that's one thing. Another thing, um, I don't know, we have been lucky, I think. Uh, of course, my, my becoming uh, a councillor has uh, given me or us more resources, more information, more insight. Um, and so far, I would like to think that we have been able to play with the multiple heads. Everybody knows that I'm the local Green Councillor and part of the transition initiative, but uh, I haven't had the feeling that we have corrupted uh, the transition initiative and made it part of the, the power games. The transition initiative has power, local political power in its own right, and everybody respects that. Um, over to Tracy. Yes, very I'm looking at him. Very, very <laughs> power. It's true, actually. You know, we have we were very, very conscious when we started to work which you know i think in terms of the mit this is quite interesting as well like we you know in hungary an ngo that i worked for we helped to set up the hungarian association of climate friendly councils we ha we helped to set that up about 15 years ago and what we saw was that you could have climate friendly councils with councillors who are very committed to doing something about climate change at a local level but these councillors come and go. And also the support for these councillors within their own councils also changes. You know, they're in a power dynamic. And what we found was that um, 
this this good work that these people started, could you put it up, please? This good work that these people started was quite often undermined by the fact that they didn't have a local community base. So what we decided to do was to start working as a local community base to see what would happen. You know, we were an experiment. We were quite clear about what we were doing. We were experimenting with the idea of a local community feeling strongly that we had to do something great to change our prospects in the face of climate change. And we started to work as a transition group without the council, without speaking to the council, intentionally not speaking to the council, because we, we thought like, you know, eventually the council will want to speak to us. You know, we're going to do so many great things. We're going to be so useful. We're going to involve so many people that we're going to become so desirable that when I finally go and say to the councillor, the councillors, to the mayor, and this is what we did after three years, we go and say to them, listen, we're here. We know you've noticed because we're, you know, it's not possible not to notice. Um, just to tell you we're here, just to tell you what we're doing, just to say that we notice the things that you're doing and eventually we might work together on these things. And we just basically kind of like acknowledged each other and acknowledged that we didn't want anything off of each other. We were just happy for everybody to go on with what they were doing. And that was intentional because we wanted to be strong in our own respect. And you know in retrospect i think that was a really good strategy you know and now when we cooperate with them we do cooperate from a point of strength and we don't differentiate between the different um councillors own political backgrounds if they're willing to work with us we're willing to work with them um it's just difficult that they don't all because of their own political convictions want to work with us but we're open and we remain open you know and we have wonderful working relationships, to be honest, with many parts of the, the council bureaucracy. You know, for them, we're, we're like a, a kind of a warm cup of tea in many respects. They like to, they like to have a chance to talk about stuff which is important to them, which they don't have um, many people within their councils who they can think outside the box with. So we've had a really great experience with that as well. Okay, thank you very much to everybody for all the contribution you gave us. I think it's time for us to close this session because it was a little bit uh, smaller than the other webinars up to now. But even though it was, it was smaller, I think we had very uh, useful contribution from everybody. Uh, we will publish this uh, um, video, this, this webinar soon in our blog. And I thank you everybody also because it's such a day at this time <laughs> it's not, you know, uh, you, normally you don't have such a great, you know, contribution. So, so. thank you very much to everybody again and uh, stay tuned. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye, -bye everybody. Great to see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.